Hi everyone, welcome to the CSS3 course. This video is going to talk about the pseudo classes and pseudo elements. So pseudo classes can help us specify the style that is put to some states of an element. And the pseudo elements would help me locate a portion of the elements. So before I discuss these things, I'm going to show you my web page on the right hand side. And the code that corresponds to this um, web page is shown on the left hand side of the screen. So I have the head first, which shows the uh, title on the tab. And then I, I have some elements inside the, the body. I have some headings together with some links. I also have some other uh, headings together with, with some paragraphs. And then I have an, an ordered list. And then I have two text boxes. And after that, I have another paragraph. Before that, I have a heading. So I'm going to make use of the uh, web page here to demonstrate the pseudo classes and the pseudo elements. So let me go back to the beginning. And then I'd like to open my CSS file. OK. Um, I would like to introduce pseudo classes first. The pseudo class can help be specified the states of an element. So I would like to demonstrate it with an example. I want to change the uh, state of a hyperlink. Okay, so what does it mean by th this statement? A means the anchor element, and for this anchor element, when the uh, mouse cursor is put on top of it, I would like to change the color of the hyperlink to cyan. So when I simply put my cursor on top of the hyperlink, the color will be turned to cyan. Okay, so this is the meaning of hover. Hover means that I just put the cursor on top of the link, and the color corresponding to this date will be changed according to my CSS file specification. Okay, so this is the meaning of a colon hover. So we can see that a pseudo class is mentioned after the colon character, okay? So when we specify the element, we need a colon together with the pseudo class, which is simply a state of the element. In addition to the hover state, a hyperlink can also have other states. So let me um, elaborate on it now. Okay, what does it mean by the word active? The word active means that when I simply click on the link by holding on my left button of my mouse, I'm able to change the uh, hyperlink to lime green color. So you can see that when I simply um, press the hyperlink, the color has turned to another one specified on my style sheet. So here, active means I press the hyperlink So the word active simply means that I'm going to activate the link by pressing it. And after that, I'd like to introduce um, other types of pseudo classes. For example, I would like to specify the first appearance of the type of element. Okay, when I do so, I'm able to change the background color of um, the first paragraph element inside my HTML document. So the first paragraph is this one, which is from this to that. So I'm going to change the background color of the first appearance of the paragraphs inside my HTML file 
So you can see that other paragraphs are not affected because I just choose the first appearance of my of the paragraph element. Okay, so this is known as the first of type pseudo class. In addition to choosing the first appearance, I'm also able to, to choose the nth appearance. How can I do that? I can have a similar way as the one shown above. Okay, I have another pseudo class called nth of type. And the number inside the parentheses is simply telling me to choose the number of elements. So I would like to choose the third element, which is of paragraph type. So paragraph one is here, which has turned to cyan background color. And the second paragraph is here. And the third one is below the second one. So I'm going to change the background color of the third paragraph to another color called Nava White. Okay, so we can see that only this paragraph has changed to another color. Okay, I'm not going to affect other paragraphs by means of this pseudo class selector. Okay, and a pseudo class is also able to help us find out the first child of a parent element. So what does it mean by that? We can see an example on my web page. So let me go to class one first. I'm going to demonstrate this property with this division. Okay, now I'm able to change the font of the first element of my unordered list to be monospace. So when we follow this selector, we can see that I'm going to choose the division which has a class name called class one. And inside this particular division, I'm going to look for the unordered list inside this particular division. And in this unordered list, I'm going to find out the li element and there are three li elements so i'm just going to find out the first child of the parent element so the parent element is simply the unordered list and these three list items are actually the children of this ul parent element so i'm just going to find out the first child of the ul element so i'm just going to pick up this list element. So you can see on the uh, web page that only the first item has changed to monospace font. And I'm not going to affect all other children of the unordered list element. So in addition to choosing the first child, can I just choose other children? Yes, we have a, such a way to do so in CSS. Okay, I can use the nth child pseudo class, and the number corresponds to the element number of your um, children. So I'm going to choose the second child inside the UL parent element. So I'm going to change the font family of the second item to sans serif. Okay, so this um, selector is quite similar to the uh, pseudo class that I used for the first child. And then I'm going to demonstrate um, the ways to choose a certain element more precisely. So let me go to the uh, text boxes. So I have two text boxes. The first one has the required keyword. That means that we, I need to really fill in something before I can submit uh, the form. 
and the second one is not a required entry. So if I want to really choose this particular input element, how can I do so in the CSS file? I can have one way by means of the pseudo class. Okay, you can see that the background color of the first text box has changed to orchid. So what does it mean by this um, pseudo class? Input element here is simply representing these two elements. And I don't want to change the background color of both input elements. I just want to change the background color of the one that has the um, word required inside the declaration on the HTML file. So it means that um, the colon required pattern is going to help me just choose the input element that has the required keyword. So I'm just going to change the background color of the first element out of the two input elements. Okay. And after that, I'm going to introduce some pseudo elements that can specify a portion of an element. So before doing so, I would like to go to the class 2 first. I'm going to use class 2 to demonstrate the pseudo elements. The first one to demonstrate is something like this. Okay, a pseudo element is simply a portion of an element. So what does it mean by this sentence? We can see an example here. I'm going to locate the paragraph with the class name called class2. And in this particular class, I'm going to just locate the first letter, which is simply the capital L here. So I just want to change the cap first capital L to 48 pixels font size. So the first letter is simply a pseudo element provided by the CSS um, documentation. And we really want to make use of a pseudo element. We need two colons before mentioning the pseudo element. Okay. So this is one of the examples of the pseudo elements. I have one more to show you now. Okay, this statement is going to help me change the background color of the first line of the paragraph with the name called class 2. So the background color has turned to orange. And this background color is dependent on the first line only. So what does it mean by the first line? When I enlarge the window, the first line just becomes that long. Okay. So the first line refers to the field port that you can see on the browser. So when I reduce the size, I'm just able to show the first line for such a number of words only. Okay, so the first line refers to what you see on the field port. The field pot is, is simply the area that you can see on your browser. And also I have one more example of the pseudo elements. So what does it mean by the word selection? Selection simply means the text that I'm going to choose by means of my cursor. So when I highlight these words, I'm able to see that the color of the words has turned to yellow and the background color of my selection becomes the chocolate color. 
So when I simply move my cursor, I'm able to change both the color and the background color of the selection. So the selection means that I'm going to choose some words by means of my cursor. If you want to learn more about the possible pseudo selectors and pseudo classes, we can go to this web page, pseudo classes and pseudo elements. And this web page is part of the Mozilla Developer Network. And at the end of this page, you will be able to see a lot of pseudo classes together with the pseudo elements. So you can see that the possible ways to edit your web page will be ever increasing. So you can see that there are some pseudo classes that are still under development. So after this video, you are able to make use of the pseudo classes and the pseudo elements to help you specify the portions of the web page that you are going to style more precisely. This is the end of the video. If you have any questions about my video, please leave your questions on the comment section below the video. If you like this video, please give me a like and please subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.